In this video, we will learn a more complete usage of RESTful APIs, which is bidirectional communication with the server that is both sending and requesting of data. In tutorial 18, I demonstrate sending of data to ThingSpeak server using the HTTP POST method, while in tutorial 19, I demonstrate requesting of data from open weather server using HTTP GET method. This time, I would like to demonstrate both data writing and data reading to ThingSpeak IoT platform using RESTful APIs. I have here a two sets of ESP32 board, which has a DHT sensor and an LED attached to it. The DHT sensor readings will be transmitted to the server while the state of the LED will be requested from the server. Another is this Heltec ESP32 kit with its built-in OLED display and an onboard tactile button switch. The OLED will be used to display the DHT sensor readings by requesting from the server. The button switch will be used to control the state of the LED by sending the state to the server. For your reference, the circuit diagrams will be posted in my blogs. Links in the video description. I created two channels in my ThingSpeak account, which are this one, RESTful API Channel 1 for Do It ESP32 board, and another RESTful API Channel 2 for the Heltec ESP32 board. This one, RESTful API Channel 1 Do It, with two fields, which is field 1 for the temperature, and another field, field 2, for the humidity. And another channel, which is this one, RESTful API Channel 2, for the Heltec ESP32 board, with a single field, which is the LED state. The reason of creating two separate channels is to simplify the coding. I could do it in a single channel, but we need to handle the null, or blank fields. This happens when, let's say, this ESP32 do it board sends a DHT readings to the server, but it will only update the fields for temperature and humidity, and leaving the LED state field blank or null. The workaround could be to create another field that will serve as a flag. One for do it. ESP32 board and another for the Heltec write plug. And by doing that, complicates the coding. I have here a source code prepared. One is for ESP32 do it board and another for the Heltec OLED ESP32 development board. I uploaded it to the MicroPython device root directory and save it as a main.py so that after reset, or power up, it will be executed automatically. Let's demonstrate it first, then afterwards, briefly discuss the code. But before that, in the channel, let me delete the previous data by going to channels and clear channel. So the data is deleted. Let me clear also the other channel, which is this one. Channel settings, clear channel, don't delete. Okay, and save. Now, the data is cleared. To demonstrate it, let me power it up. So the do it is power up and the OLED Heltec development board is also powered up. So after 5 seconds, the DHT reading should be displayed in this OLED. Okay, so currently 
my room temperature is 28.8 degrees Celsius and a humidity of 64%. When I press the program uh, tactile button, it will it will toggle the state of this LED. So, let me press it. When this ESP32 board updates the or requests an update from the ThingSpeak server, the LED should change its uh, state or it will toggle. Okay. So, let me press again. And you may also observe that the readings in our uh, chart in the ThingSpeak is also updated. Okay. The LED now changes its state. While discussing the source code, let us, let's leave the boards running at the background. The source code is almost identical with a slight difference, by which I will point out later on. So, here in the RESTful API DHT for the DOIT ESP32 board, basically it starts with loading of necessary libraries, then create an object, connect to a Wi-Fi router, then create constants and variables, global constants and variables, then the main loop. Okay? The update interval is achieved using the time module. Update is set to 3 seconds for the sake of demonstration. So, it's still the same from the previous tutorial, which used the time module. So, here, we use HTTP GET to request for the data from the ThingSpeak API. Since this is a do it ESP32 board, it use HTTP GET method to request for the LED state from here. From channel 2. Okay, it uses on the read API key, this one, yeah, this one, so basically same as before, it uses a U request module and use the get method to request for this API. If the response is status code okay or status code 200, the JSON formatted response is saved to the data and the field one is parsed using this code. And the STR converts the data to string. Then according to that, we control the external LED from the other side. And the other point is this HTTP post, which basically sends an update or DHT sensor readings to the ThingSpeak server. It starts with getting the temperature and humidity measurement and format the data for sending. This is for the temperature and the humidity. And the HTTP POST method is used for sending the data. And before exiting, we toggle the LED state to indicate that our board is functioning. And the current time is saved in the last update for the next interval. On the other side of the code for the health tech, it's identical. Load the modules. Create the objects and connect to a Wi-Fi router. 
create a global variables and constants and the main loop. It posts or it sends an update to the ThingSpeak server according to the uh, if the button switch is pressed. If it's pressed, the LED state variable is toggled. Then, it is formatted, ready for sending to ThingSpeak server. Then, before exiting, close the request, and there's a debug message. Another is the HTTP GET method for requesting a data from the server. We use the OLED to display the temperature and humidity sensor readings. It starts by sending, by requesting a GET method from ThingSpeak server. If the response is OK, the response JSON formatted is saved to the data. Then the field 1 and field 2, which are temperature and humidity sensor readings, is parsed from the received data. And it was displayed to the OLED. If there is an error, it will be posted or it will be displayed in the OLED and also to the REPL. We also use the onboard LED to toggle its state to indicate that our board is functioning properly. And lastly, the current time is saved on the last update variable which is to be used for the update interval. The ThingSpeak RESTful API is used demonstrating HTTP POST method for writing field values in HTTP GET method for reading a field. For more details about this, you may watch tutorial 18 and 19 respectively. So that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Be sure to give me thumbs up by clicking the like button and do share this to your friends so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. And if you are not yet subscribed, Subscribe now and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when a new video like this is uploaded. You might also like to visit my blog post at techtotinker.blogspot.com for more details such as circuit diagram and source code. Thank you and have a good days ahead. I hope to see you next time. Bye!